OMG! World Cup! It's half World time right Cup. now. Is it Mexico? Mexico and Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Where are they playing? Look at me right now. It's half time. It's 0 0. Okay. Okay. Who's that right now? TikTok? Because I don't have Telemundo. Oh my gosh. Click the live. Click the live. Like when the comments are like only right there. You can't see. Oh. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. World Cup! World Cup! Actually, in a healthy one. Right, so, you guys ready for the test? <laughs> Miguel said he doesn't like me because I beat him. Yes, I'm trying to be like him. Oh, it's a test. Yes, yes. Wait, what? Yes. It's a test? Uh -huh. yes. What? Are you in a test <laughs> on positive and toxic relationships? You guys all ready to go? Are we able to run with this? Wait, what? Guys, I don't pay attention to this class at all. On the computer? Is yeah. it on the computer? No. Oh. Oh. Okay. Wait, so how is it going to be graded? Paper. Like on paper? Oh, okay. So is anyone ready to go? No. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. World Cup. Does anyone have some issue with this or no? Yes. No. What's that? Yeah. 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 Not the day, mister. Yeah. 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 What do you mean it's a top-up? Oh. Yeah. I'm not ready for that. You didn't know it was coming? So the fact that I sprung it on you makes it a little difficult to deal with? Yes. I understand that at the same time. Sometimes I have it. Do you have Diego Lainey? No, now. Haven't said it. We need to stop. Hey, uh, Charles, no one. Leave that alone. Mexico. Let me see my nails. Right here. <laughs> Freshly set. I know. My Frenchy set. Freshly set. And it's a little sticky. Today. It's okay. Freshly show your nails. It is there. Stick off. Stick off. Stick off. Stick off. I have a need I'm scared that I'm going to get in a fight. Why? Oh. All right. Everybody listen no, to not right now. But, like, what if I do? Attention, and, like, I now want to point out that I have this fib, which means that I told you a lie that I intended to tell you the truth. We are not. We are not going to be taking any chess today. <gasps> the reason that I said that, we'll get to that shortly. Jump scare. Jump scare. Oh. Jump scare. Oh. Oh. And we should do the the butterfly butterfly thing on TikTok, <laughs> and then with the voice thing, with the voice. I did it with my dad. I saw that was so funny. <laughs> we should do it. Try my phone. You can do it. yeah because we're watching World Cup. Wait. Also, I have a big ass forehead. But really, we don't have a big ass forehead. Grab so my hair all the way up because I would like, you know. My hair. I remember one time I had my. Oh Jesus, Lord! Hold on, let me fix this first. Okay. This one time, in seventh grade, I used to put my hair up a lot. Bruh. Dog. Dog. 
Do you watch the World Cup? Yeah. Are you going for Mexico or Saudi Arabia? Mexico or Saudi Arabia? I'll go with Mexico. Yeah! Huh? Mexico and Saudi Arabia. Alright, everybody. Phones away, please. Phones away. Today is like actual stuff to do. Okay. Alright. We'll get switched later. We'll get switched. I need a pencil. And a pen. I will take a pen. I'm confident like that. A pen. I use anything. I'll use anything. Phones away, please. I will now present a PowerPoint slide that I have already shown you guys. We've already discussed this. Pay attention Yay! now. Oh, this is what we I found it. Excuse me, it's written it. on your notes. Oh uh, no, that was the one I drew. Isaac, it has no left. Hey, <laughs> Isaac, please. All right, I'm helping out. Oh, I have a Sharpie. I'll use it. Go ahead and get one of those if you need. All right, this is what needs to be written on your notes so far. Again, this is the PowerPoint slide that we've already talked about. Toxic relationships and how to end them. First, you need to identify that it's toxic. Then you need advice and support from friends and family. The most important step is to break dependency. Whatever it is that's keeping you in that toxic relationship, you need to find a way to satisfy that need elsewhere. You should prepare for change because things are going to be different and you're going to feel it too. And prepare for resistance because they are not going to go quietly. What's the top? Is that the topic? Not quite. This is a very short review, but I still want this to be on your notes. So the focus notes for today are going to include these five statements. Feel free to take a picture of it if that's what you want to do. And you can use that on future tests and whatever. So do I actually really need to take the notes, or can I just take the game notes? No, it does require the notes. This is... Will you be grading this? Yes, of course. Oh, he always grades the notes, Isaac. Right? Leslie, mm. Liliana, I mean, Liliana. 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 Leslie. Yes. Leslie. Yes. Look back here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 I'll see you guys when we're done uh, writing. No. I didn't make your yeah. Oh. There's I a pause button. Button. No, there is no pause Anybody button. 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 I thought that was the pause button. No, that's the take a picture button. Everybody. Right. My bad, guys. For Chong? Prepare for Chong. I have a big Chong. Yeah, I suck at four. It's really hard. We to have a set. picture. Yeah. Okay, I'm hard. Right now. I suspect that you have the ability. I'm always hard in this class. All right, everyone, get this so far. These five statements. No. No. All right, let's get these written down. Prepare for resistance. Uh, yeah. Keep it up, everyone. I've got. Wait. Please. please make sure that I get these back. Can I call a friend? I'm scared. Is it an I got one more pen. What's the adjective? I forgot. I know it's like. Alright, yes, Ellie. The topic. Thank you for asking. I'm sorry I neglected to say that. So on the unit where it says Girl, the title, I, I, it says coping with the end of a relationship. That is. And I wrote it in pen. Coping with the end of a relationship. Mr. Can I get a new paper? Thank you. Toyota. Lo hacemos fácil. Mexican, you can do What are the best tactics for coping with the end of a relationship? I just gave COP on one of my suicides. Coping with the end of a relationship. This is actually very helpful. Coping. With the end. Right, I'm about to move to the next slide. Hold on, no, 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 what? The essential question is what are the best tactics for coping with the end of a relationship? The best tactics for coping with the end of a relationship. All right, moving on to the next slide. Because once again, this is one we've already seen before, right? We've already covered how to end a toxic relationship. 
But today we're going to be shifting the perspective. So I'll also re-show you another slide we already covered, which is what you should do on breakup day. Breakup day. Right? You ensure break up day. privacy and safety. Speak honestly, simply, kindly, but firmly. Don't engage in accusations. Don't try to remain friends. And consider their perspective. No, but That's really, right. I'm, I'm dying. We've discussed it before. But the thing is, everybody, we have discussed these two slides. We've discussed these concepts from, concepts from the perspective of you being the person who is ending the relationship. But now we're going to switch it because, unfortunately, I need to be the one to point out to you that it's entirely likely, very, very probable, in fact, that most of you in here will eventually experience a relationship that ends at a time when you didn't want it to. That ends because the other person is the one who ends it. And that right there is a totally different perspective, isn't it? Right? It's one thing when you're the one who wants to end a relationship, but when the other person is the one who wants to end it and you do not want to end it, it affects you differently. It affects you in a more egregious way. And that's what we're getting into today, is how to end or how to cope with the end of your relationship when perhaps you really want to. Hey, ladies, please put your phone away. Right? Yesterday was fine. I let it go yesterday. But today we're back to learning things that are actually valuable for your future. We are learning. That's good. But right now you're showing me that you're paying more attention to this soccer. Yes. Which I get it. I understand. But still. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> One more minute to finish right these things here. Next. No. Please. 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 He meant please. He meant no please, no sir. And to do so, I want to point out how I originally started this class by giving you guys some bad news. Now, you guys didn't really react quite as much as the previous classes, but that's okay. I can still work with it. I told you guys that we were going to take our test today. Mm -hmm. And most of you did not react very well to that. Right? Was there anyone in here that liked it? And was like, oh, yeah, that's a good thing. I want to take the test. Didn't even hear you. No one likes us. All right, then. The majority of people here in the middle didn't really like the idea of taking the test. Bree asked if we could take it some other day. Pointing out, Bree, right, you pointed out that this was a surprise. You weren't ready for this. Right? So it was a negative thing that happened without you being prepared for it. The same type of thing happens when you are broken up with. Right? So now I want to introduce, not introduce, chances are I'm repeating something you've probably already heard before. 
And that is the five stages of grief. All right, so that's what we're going to be discussing right now, the five stages of grief. We humans all basically react in the same predictable manner whenever something negative happens to us, such as when we get broken up with by a person that we like still and care about, or when your teacher springs on you that you're having a test. Either way, you don't like it. It's something you weren't prepared for. It's something that you don't want, and we all react in similar ways. Generally speaking, the first thing that's going to happen is people are going to be in denial. Oh, yeah. To consider that the reality is not this way. We're not taking the test today, or this person's not breaking up with me. That didn't happen. You deny it. You try to find a way to act as if it's not real. Now, that is usually the shortest of the phases. Because oftentimes, it becomes abundantly clear that it is real, and you're no longer able to deny it. Some of you may have immediately jumped to anger, mad about the situation. Bree, that might have been you, right? Angry at the fact that I said it's time to take a test and you felt you weren't ready for it and you were mad about it and you even told me, right? Now you didn't say the words, I'm mad at you, but you did tell me that I was doing something wrong, right? I sprung it on you when you weren't ready, so therefore you were angry about that to some degree. And that's what happens, right? This phase of grief, the five stages of grief, you can also basically take that word grief and switch it to cognitive dissonance. The five stages of cognitive dissonance. This is what's going to happen anytime something happens to you that you don't like and you don't agree with. First, you're going to try to deny it. Second, you're going to be angry about it because it's a situation that you don't want. Who thinks they know what comes next? Um, depression. Yeah, so sadness and depression. That does come later, but there's another step that comes first, another phase. Accusations. Like accusing um, the other person. That's a, that's a behavior that I think gets brought up that, that does happen in these stages of grief. Go ahead. No, that's going to be the very last one. <laughs> right? But what's going to happen after you are angry about this situation? Here's the example, right? Your partner that you still love and care about has now communicated to you that they don't want you anymore. Uh, you are going to be sad, but do you remember when the previous slides we talked about being prepared for resistance. That um, resistance is the bargaining phase. Um, and this is what like people accusation. do. Say that again? Like accusation? No. Well, I mean, an accusation is usually more of trying to ease your own um, sense of guilt. Like you try to say, you, it's your way of trying to no longer be angry about the situation. You're, well, it's one, wouldn't that be like, wouldn't that be like, intertwined with the bargaining stage? Certainly could be, yes. It can be there. You, you could consider that, yeah. What's right? Oh. Um, so in this bargaining phase, <laughs> this is when you're going to get the, the partner that is trying to promise that they will change. They will say, I, I'm sorry I did that. I'll never do it again. I promise I will change. I'll be better. I will do these things going forward. You can count on me. That's what they always right? say. They're bargaining with you. They're trying to negotiate to try to save the relationship. And this is also what you are all very likely to do if you're ever in this situation where your partner has decided to call it quits with you. All right? The first thing that's going to happen, you're going to want to deny it. After that, you're going to be angry about the situation. <clears throat> because consider this, everybody. When you have an intimate partner, right, a person that you have been sexually intimate with, this person knows you better than anyone else on the planet. And so when they come and communicate to you that they no longer value you, that's a real shot to the heart, isn't it? Right? That can be very difficult to deal with. That is a question. What if this might even look like partner? Like, what if I know, like, like every time I think really, about really it, really I'm like, like, like yeah. you know, tell them. But it's like, this. You're saying, so, so you want that, really so you're saying you want that, that relationship, it really hasn't really been really established really yet, really but, really yeah. right? The same thing goes, right? You're still experiencing something negative because right. you communicated that you See, wanted something oh, black, and then right? you didn't get it. You they denied purple. you, right? So now you have cognitive it's dissonance. Actually purple. Oh. The reality is what it is, and it's not what you wanted. So therefore, you're still going to go through these stages yes, of grief, it is right? You it's might deny it. Think, oh, no, they, they do love me. They do care about me. They just don't know it yet. That's denial. Or you might shift into anger. Why don't they love me? How come they don't care for me the way that I care for them? You're angry about that, right? My nails. Like, what? Nothing. Oh, all right. 
And then after that, bargaining, oh. right? So in that example, you start pleading with them. Please, we can give this a shot. I'm a really good guy, blah, 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 right? That's just another form of bargaining, negotiating to try to get what you want. And ultimately, when that doesn't work out, when they stand strong and they say, no, you're not the person that I want. No, I'm sorry, the relationship is over. Next, you are likely to slip into some form of depression. I'm just playing. I'm just gonna be single. Now after this right. stage of depression, what like I want to get into a relationship, trending. but at the same time I don't. What you know what I mean? Because it's the like final stage. there's always gonna be. Acceptance would be the final stage. There's always stage. gonna be another girl. But let me ask you questions, people. Love. Questions. Is it possible for a person to go through these phases and then go back a phase? Is it? How so? Well, maybe because they like accept it, but then they realize that they haven't. They're just telling themselves that they accept it. Okay. And so then they go through the whole phase again. All right, so you're talking about they, they kind of trick themselves. Yeah. All right, that is valid. Now, excuse me, me. I will, yeah. I noticed. All right, I will go ahead and say that it is totally possible to flip back and forth these. All right, if you get broken up with, you try your bargaining phase and you try to say, I'll change, I promise, but they don't do it, you slip into a depression. Then what happens if maybe a week later you come in contact with this person again, another interaction. Now you slip right back into bargaining and you try again. Hey, I've changed, right? I'm different than I was last week. I'm better now. That's Can we try it again? Week. That's you going right back to bargaining. And now if they say, no, sorry, I've already moved on. Well, that might make you slip back into anger. Over a week. Or, it's uh, like a yeah, week. a week, a month, a year, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I, have a, I have flour here. Hey, look, that's just an example. I'm taking them right? But hey, we've already, we've already uh, established that when you want to end a relationship, you need to break dependency. Some people choose to break dependency by finding another person ahead of time. Uh, right? Oh, so it's entirely really possible that it's any like, of you in here could be in a relationship where the person that. finds someone else that they think is better than you. And then they come and communicate to you that you are not worthy anymore and they no longer want to be in a relationship with you. Damn. So yes, you can go forward and then backward. Damn. Do you? <laughs> that you? We could. You could certainly make that argument. Yeah, you can make that argument. This is Saudi not, Arabia, right? I'm not gonna deny that. Mm -hmm. That sounds like cheating to me. This is KSA. I mean, Cheating doesn't even have to necessarily be a physical action. Just your thought process of a desire to be with someone else, it means that there's a problem in the relationship, right? It may not be a true act of cheating, but it means that you're preparing yourself for it. It means that you're moving in that direction. So keep that in mind. Anyway. Like, Generally speaking, them? once a person does get to yeah. acceptance, like, in the back they're the probably they're not like, very susceptible oh, to moving right. back. Because if they truly got to acceptance, and Isaac, they like, if they know, truly so got to acceptance, so then they, they they've gotten to a point where they no now. longer care. They no longer have that same emotional attachment, and they have moved on. Which of these phases is the is likely to last the longest? Depression. Depression, Depression right? The phase of depression is likely to last the longest. Now, before we move on, take a three minute break. Go ahead. Go to the bathroom, Jose. Okay, guys, update on the game. Mexico. Discord. Viva Mexico. Go with Joe. Take about a five minute break. You got five minutes. See? No. Hey, ladies in the middle. Wait, Sorry. Mister, Mister. I, mean, I know it's World Cup. World, World Cup. Cup. They scored two goals. They Mexico. scored. We scored two goals. Oh, Mexico. Yeah, Mexico. Two to zero. Yeah, it's hard for me to back Saudi Arabia. Cuatro, cuatro. Cuatro. Have you ever been to This is a TikTok live right. because we don't it's have Telemundo, nice. and yeah. I tried opening mm -hmm. Telemundo and it didn't work. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want this? Oh yeah! Oh, oh my gosh! Okay, hold on. We're gonna do it. Do you wanna do it with us, Lassie? Really? Okay, hold on. Ladies, she's Colombia still in it? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Russia's not. 
Russia got banned. Yeah, Russia got banned. Yeah, that makes sense. Here. Russia? Okay. Why? Banned from the World Cup. Butter? Okay. Butter? 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 Why? Oh. Butter? Butter? Flash, butter, 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 is everybody else stuff you do? Butter, butter, fly, butterfly. Shut the fuck <laughs> <laughs> Okay, me and Okay, go. Butter, 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 fly, butterfly. This has got to be racist. This has got to be racist. <laughs> this has got to be racist. Anyways. I'll write those down. I'll write you. I'll write you. Oh, this is why I hate flash. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a jokey joke. Wait, is this the recording? Yeah. Anyways, you guys, we're watching the World Cup. World Cup! World Cup! Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> and Mexico has scored two, 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 two goals. What? Look at my hand, please. <laughs> 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 if they score three goals, they could like qualify. I don't know. Guess who are. How are you gonna tell me? Argentina is still one. Argentina is winning. Is yours? Oh, yeah. What's my magic trick? Let's see. Oh, the fart. We do that again. Tip, you know? Oh, oh, I thought that was at the top. What the wow. fuck? Wow. Ooh, no, mm. Wait, take a picture, take a picture, take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Did you take a okay. picture? Wow. Oh, it's. Oh, oh take a picture. Ah! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go from the tip. Because it's health class, you know, we gotta use our words. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's a, a hands-on experience, boy. Whoa. Sorry, I'm watching I'm videoing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 Oh! 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 Oh, 
Let me put one for you guys real quick. Two, boom, 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 boom. We're matching. Sort of. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I did hear you. I was just too focused. Look at this beautiful. <laughs> you guys, you, you know you guys are like meant to be when you guys match on this. Right. Sort of, not really, but like, you get the point. Except for the pants. So. Yeah. And the shoes. And like the length of the shirt. The length of the shirt. I was about to burp. Oh. Alright everybody, break time's over, let's continue. Depression. 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 Yeah. 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 Depression. So on that note, I'm going to cover some of the physiological effects of what is going to happen to a person when they are in the depression phase. Right? So when a person has gone through the stages of grief, the stages of cognitive dissonance, and they get into that depression phase, Thank you. these Thank are the you. types of behaviors that you can expect. So first, you're going to have anxiety. And this is due to a social rejection. Because as I've already said, when you're the person who's being broken up with, that's just a way of pointing out that the person who knows you best has deemed you unworthy, which is a negative thing. It's a hard thing to cope with. We've already covered the concept that nobody wants cognitive dissonance and everybody wants to be considered positive versus negative. There's not a single person that exists that would rather think of themselves and be considered by everyone else as being ugly versus attractive. There's nobody that would rather be considered stupid compared to intelligent, right? That doesn't make any sense. We all would rather be positive than to be negative. So therefore, when we are broken up with, when another person communicates to us that we are not good enough, it's going to come with negative feelings. It's going to come with anxiety due to the social rejection. Well, it's also yeah. going to come with withdrawal symptoms. I've already pointed out how infatuation is an addiction to your partner. So ultimately, when you're in a relationship, you are essentially addicted to them. You require them to be around you. You need them waking up next to you because that's what you're used to, Damn. right? Damn. You lose Damn. the things that you were familiar with. Damn. I said before, they don't wake up next to you anymore. They don't make you coffee anymore. They're not there to help you with the dishes anymore. They're not there to console you when you had a bad day at work, right? All those things are now gone from your dynamic that you used to have. So you're going to go through withdrawal symptoms. You're going to want that person back in your life. You're going to miss them. As they should. Also, you are going to experience irritability. This is due to extra stress hormones. Justin, what is the stress hormone? What is the stress hormone? I've also referred to it as the human killer in the past. It's not written up there. I'm asking, I'm just asking, can you tell me what the stress hormone is? No? Does anyone remember the stress hormone? It's not serotonin. That's actually more a regulatory hormone, but it's actually more associated with good feelings than it is with negative. Justin, you have a question there. You can tell Okay. Can anyone remember what the stress hormone is? Um, You've seen it on PowerPoints. We've discussed it before. It's made its way into review questions. No, oxytocin is a good hormone, one that makes us feel connected with people, right? It makes us feel like that person cares about us, and we care about them. So it's not oxytocin. What hormone is released during times of stress? Anybody? I forgot. Let me drink a more. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. 
the only hormones I memorized were oxytocin and dopamine. I have said those one the most. It's cortisol and testosterone. Oh. Cortisol, the human killer. So when oh, negative things know. happen to us, <laughs> right? Anytime we experience any cognitive dissonance at all to any degree, right? Our amygdala activates. It's similar to a fight, flight, or freeze response. All right? Cortisol is released. Adrenaline is released. Adrenaline, you may remember, is what helps with the fight, flight, or freeze response. It's what makes us capable of being aggressive so that we can fight for our lives. So if you're in a state of depression and you're experiencing heightened hormones of cortisol and adrenaline, how do you think that affects your behavior? Do you think it makes you a calm, docile person? Probably not. To get along with? Or does it make you anxious and irritable? And angry. <laughs> yes, it does. How do I spell what? She hit it and it just like his eye. Like he tried to Cortisol. C O R T I S O L. I see. S. I see. Cortisol. That's very much a Z. Really? He's up there? Oh, just walking. Like, um. All right. So what happens where? here? You're in this state of depression. You have heightened levels of cortisol, heightened levels of adrenaline. It makes you a more anxious, irritable, apathetic, and angry person. I've already pointed out how toxic relationships oh. ultimately erode you into a worse version of yourself. And the same can be said for the stage of depression. Right? When you're in a state of depression, this is the way that you're going to be. Behaving. These are the things that are happening that's to you. PTSD. This last one. I just can't one, see. Right? You start to not <laughs> care about things. I've already pointed out how a toxic relationship will stifle your happiness. It'll make it so that you don't care about the things that I you used to care about. Yesterday. And this is what happens when you when? enter a state of depression. Yesterday. You used to go play basketball with all I your friends and now you don't really care to. You used to get online on and play video games with people around the country. Now you don't care to. You used to go bowling. Now you don't care to. Whatever it was. Now it doesn't okay. seem as good anymore. Like last time I did that. All right, so, so you get so into weird. this phase like, here. Right. And let me ask you questions, everybody. Okay. Kiara, like if you were to see crazy. another person and you can so see random. that they are anxious and irritable and apathetic, they are depressed, are you more likely or less likely to engage with that person? Ooh. Less likely, right? When any of us sees another person who's behaving in these ways, that's not something that's appealing to us. Just leave it, Katie. I want to turn this in first. Your notes? Right, oh, yeah. Off, my bad. Right, right. My bad, Hadi. So, where are you trying to head to right now? Macy's. What's, what's Macy got for you? I'm all waiting. Have a good day, Katie. So anyway, as I was saying, when we see other people that are in this phase, it makes us less likely to want to be around them. It makes us less likely to engage with them. It makes us less likely to find them appealing. We're less likely to care about them. We're less likely to help them. We're more likely to isolate them, right? Or isolate ourselves from them. Why? Did I hear someone say why? Why, why do we humans do that? Because. It's unpleasant, right? Think about it if I was behaving this way. If I came into class every day and I was always anxious and apathetic and irritable, you guys wouldn't like me very much. You wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to interact with me. You would avoid me at all costs because it's not pleasant to deal with, right? And so now look at this from your perspective if you are the one who's in this depressive state. Now you're setting yourself up to be isolated from everyone else. You're setting yourself up to not have any support, to not have anybody that can help pull you out of this. And that is why we need to get to this next slide, which is how to properly recover from a breakup. Yes, I Sure, but just letting you know, this next stuff right here is all the new stuff that you definitely need. This is the information that's worth out. Just letting you know. You're welcome to go to the bathroom. Just letting you know. Anyway, though. What do you think is the very first and probably most important tactic take a picture. for getting yourself out of depression? Take a picture. Delete everything that they that, that. Yeah, like delete them like delete like everything. from the from your life. 
You are correct. It is to sever contact. Sever contact. Going along with that, don't remain friends, right? That same concept. If this person has just broken up with you, they have just communicated to you that they no longer consider you worthwhile for them, then you need to find a way to sever contact. Block their number, unfollow them, delete their accounts. Break up. Right? Wake up and break up. Find a way to prevent yourself from having to be in contact with them or anyone else that even uh, creates a trigger, right? It could be other things. For instance, if the two of you, Karen and Brie, if the two of you used to go to the same, this one particular restaurant all the time, uh -huh. well, now you can't really go to that restaurant anymore, huh? Because every time you go to it, it reminds you of what you once had. So maybe that means that you can't go to that restaurant no more. That might be what has to happen. But that is part of it. You have to sever contact and find a way to prevent yourself from being exposed to any of those triggers. If you have mutual friends, you can't be hanging out with them. Not your mutual friends. You can't be hanging out with your mutual friends and your ex. Oh yeah. That doesn't sever contact. Yeah. If you have mutual friends, don't listen don't to Don't look at me like that. Talking about your ex, right? You don't need to hear that crap. Tell them to be quiet. Tell them you don't want to hear about it because you shouldn't be hearing about it. Uh, why? <laughs> why? Because... <laughs> Who's that that asked? All right, you're asking why should you sever contact, right? That's what you're asking. Ultimately, because if you're still in contact with the person that has caused you that so emotional true. pain, right? They have communicated to you, ladies, hey, they've communicated to you that they don't consider you to be worthy anymore. That's a massive hit to your ego. And so every time you're around them, now it's a reminder of what you used to have. Also, it fills you with false hope, thinking that maybe it could return to prominence. Maybe one day the relationship can get back to good. But the unfortunate reality is that once a relationship has changed and gone in a negative way, the likelihood of it ever getting back to the same level of positivity is basically zero. Not completely impossible, but it's extremely unlikely. Because once it's changed, it's already changed. It's over. It's done. So ultimately, research shows that if you want to recover from a breakup, you have to sever contact with that person. Question though, I'll go ahead and give you guys a question that you could use on, on the little sidebar there, which is supposed to be a question from your guys' own thoughts. Oh. <laughs> what if you be friends with their family? Like, what if you had a really good relationship with their mom and dad? Ooh, right? That's now all of a sudden you lose out on your partner they're gone but now your relationship that you had that was good with their parents is now altered do you stay friends with them do you still try to stay in contact that's up to you right it's up to you to decide if you're willing to do that but ultimately that's going to create another Damn. trigger right every time you're in contact with that person's parents you're reminded of that person and when push comes to shove they are on their side not yours because it, it's their child you're not their child they they have their own child and so do that at your own risk but i would suggest severing contact and that's okay the next thing that you should do is you should engage in established interests and routines engage in established interests and routines i want you to recognize that it says established as in there are already things that you've already found interesting so the examples I've given, like you go and play pickup games of basketball with your friends, or you go bowling, or you play video games, whatever it is, do those things. The things that used to bring you joy, even though right now you're in a state of depression and it's not as enjoyable, find a way to do it anyway, right? For one, it will distract you, and it gets you to not be thinking about your partner, right? So you're no longer in the same state of mind and you can start to regain some happiness. All right, so you need to make sure you engage in established interest in routine routine. Give me right a blessing. Like, I can bless Standing you. Or blessing everyone that's up there. Wait. Over there? You know where it is? Oh, there's music. It's like a little something girl. Oh, wait, no. Hold <laughs> on. Por las señales de Santa Cruz, de nuestros enemigos, y el Señor Dios, nuestro Padre del Hijo del Espíritu Santo. Es literalmente Mexican mom. Mexican grandma, like before you leave their house. Cuídate, baby. Cuídate.
They do it like this too. <laughs> like, what is this? All right, the next thing that you should do is exercise often. Oh, now, I make oh. the argument that you should exercise often, even when you're in a happy, positive relationship, because that's good too, right? There's health benefits to that. But when you are in a state of depression, for any reason, Working out is good. Go gym, but in this case, go we're to referring to I a state of depression from I straight up, gentlemen, quietly. When you are in a state of depression, is that have please. So when you are in a state of depression, it is a good idea to exercise often. Beyond just the obvious health benefits of getting bigger, faster, stronger, blah, 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 exercise releases endorphins. Endorphins are a collection of positive hormones that make you feel good in real time. So after a workout, those of you who are athletes of any kind can probably recognize that after a workout, right, you're tired from the workout, the workout itself might have been uncomfortable, but after it's done, at the very end of it, you feel good, you feel better, yeah. right? You feel better right then at that time. So when you're in a state of depression, now's a really good time to start a good exercise program. It'll make you feel better right then in real time. Plus also additionally, the way you were before, if you didn't work out all that much and then your partner breaks up with you, well now you go and work out, you feel better about yourself and then you can sit there and look back and think, I'm better now than I was. Right? Back when I was with this person, I wasn't working out and I wasn't feeling as good about myself. Now, I am working out and I'm feeling better about myself. So it makes you feel better, it makes you have more confidence, which can help you to pull you out of depression so that you can start moving towards a more positive relationship in the future. So definitely start a workout routine if you're ever finding yourself in a state of depression. Find the, the, the gumption to get up and go do a workout. It'll make you feel better. It'll, it'll promote huh? wellness Gumption. and confidence moving I think so. Forward. I don't know what it means. After that, another extremely important tactic, ladies, since you're not looking, is to use logic to justify yourself. Here's what I mean by that. Here's what I mean by that. It is a logical statement to say that any two people, when they break up, it is not necessarily just one person's fault. It is not necessarily just one person who sucks or one person who has all the issues. So therefore, you should logically recognize that it's not you, that you are not the only problem here. And that just because it didn't work out with this person doesn't mean that you are unworthy of a positive relationship. Logically speaking, you should be able to recognize that just because it didn't work out with one other human does not at all mean that you don't have other humans that would be ideal for you. I, what if like, there are a lot of relationships <laughs> where they go really, really wrong? You're saying, what if you are involved in a lot of relationships where the other person breaks up with you, right? That's yeah. what you're saying? So it just always seems like you're the one being broken up with? Yeah. Okay, well, now you're getting into some other hairy situations and that's an unfortunate thing, right? But ultimately you, in that situation, I would say you have to look at yourself deeply and think, what is it about you that could change or adjust? What is it about you and your behaviors and your actions that may have led to this? That, that doesn't mean that you should sit there and think, oh, I'm horrible and I'm not worthy of anything because those are not logical statements. A logical statement might be, I yelled, scream at this person too much and that's why they broke up with me. Or I spend too much money selfishly and don't consider their needs. That's why they broke up with me, right? That's a logical statement that you can take and try to work on changing for the future. It doesn't hit no more. So it's important to make sure that you're using logical statements with yourself when you're in a depressed state. Because otherwise, as I've said before, it's very, very easy to just be irrational about it and just think it must be that I suck, right? And then just let yourself be in that depressive state, feeling in those ways, when logically you should recognize that that's not all there is to it. There's more to it. Right? So that's the whole point of this, is to logically understand that you are not the only problem, the other person contributes to, and no matter what you may have done, there is room for improvement, you have the ability to get better and change. Right? You're not stuck in this same sta uh, status for your entire life. Good question though, any other questions before I move on? All right then, we got two more here. 
Another one that seems to keep on recurring is to seek support from others. All right? We were talking about that state of depression where you're more likely to isolate yourself and you're more capable of being apathetic towards others and even hateful and angry towards others. Find a way to be around other people who can support you, who can give you advice, who can just talk to you and listen to whatever issues you may have. Because otherwise, you're probably going to stay in a status of depression if you just keep on staying by yourself and wallowing in your own self-pity. And there's one final tactic for helping to pull yourself out of depression. And that is to volunteer or help other people. Because oftentimes, when you feel like you're stuck in a negative situation, one of the best things that you can do is distract yourself by going and applying your attention towards helping someone else. Now this does a couple things. One, it distracts you, right? You're distracted now. You're no longer thinking about your negative situation. You're no longer thinking about how your previous partner doesn't love you anymore because you're devoting your attention to something more worthwhile. Now, about that whole worthwhile part, that's another thing that you're doing for yourself is you're tricking yourself into understanding your own value. Because when you go and do good things for other people, you help a person in a way that they couldn't help themselves. That adds value to their life, which therefore convinces your brain that you are a valuable person. Because you just want to help someone, right? And your brain recognizes that. You see the smile on their face as they say thank you to you. When they show their appreciation, you recognize that and it makes you feel better right then in that moment. So whenever you are feeling sad and depressed about your life, oftentimes finding a way to go and help someone else will help you distract yourself from your negative thoughts and also help make you believe in your own sense of self-worth because you're proving to yourself that you are valuable by helping someone else. That's all I got for today. You guys got another two and a half minutes before it's time to go, so you're on break. Summary. Do, 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 sure do, do, that you have a do, summary. Do, do, do. If you don't Our write summary. anything in the summary, I can't give you credit for it. Um, and as far as the questions, if you can think of so any hypothetical question that I haven't okay, very you, specifically what's the identified what's the do summary? Rest, about? then that will help any question at all. What we learned today? Yeah. And then, of course, please make sure that you have the essential question written. It is right there. And also the topic, you know, your name. If you put all those things in there, I'll be able to give you credit for it. If you don't put those things in there, then I, surprise, surprise, can't give you credit for it. Does anyone have any questions? No. No, nobody has any hypothetical questions? To get through it. How many of you think that this will not ever apply to you? You have to That's good. I like the confidence. Go. I really do. That's good. Really? I like the confidence. And I hope that that's true. To go and I also go. will say that if you guys the follow the proper pace of a good relationship Please. and go through those milestones and then in the proper way, learning the proper yeah. things about your partner and establishing a good framework of mutual respect and admiration, then the chances are that this might not ever happen to you. Yes, I. This will be turned in, yes. Sure. It doesn't happen. And you got about uno momento. With the same person. No, it's un minuto. Minuto. One minute. I can't Quatro. I'm kind of like Quatro. Quatro. So, this is then, this is my notes. And then this is, and then the final. Okay, guys. The next one's winning two to zero. She's Argentina. Yeah, I hope they win. I mean, they are winning. What the fuck? Our summary is off. Thank you guys for watching. Bye. 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 Bye.